Today is a momentous occasion. I am outside the library getting ready to pick up what will be my 100th book of 2018. I've never read 100 books in a year before. I never thought I would, but at the beginning of this year, I was on a roll and I thought I'd just just see if I can keep it up and see if I can do it. And right now it is the end of November. I think it's, it's the 28th today. I think it's the 28th of November. And I'm currently reading number 99. So I'm going to go pick up number 100. And this book I think is particularly fitting because it is actually the last book club pick for my book club at work for the year. So I think it just fits. It just fits so well. Um, that it is the last book club pick of the year and also my 100th book. And this also means that I'm going to read some books in December. So this also means that I'm going to get over 100 books this year. Wow! And then I will never, ever do this again. Ever. I did it. <laughs> I read a hundred books. I finished this one and then it makes a hundred books in a year. I would like to thank my mom for teaching me how to read as a little child and, and reading to me lots of books when I was little. I'd like to thank Timmy who's sitting next to me. <laughs> listening to this rambling and 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 dealing with me you're welcome <laughs> i'd also like to thank my cat cat and if you hear that humming it's my fake uh, fireplace over there cuz it's it's cold in the house so yes i read 100 books the seven and a half 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 death it's late uh the seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle by stuart turton was my 100th book of the year and it's only the beginning of december so i'm still gonna read some more and if you stay tuned the rest of the video is gonna go over my stats i made a spreadsheet and we're gonna talk about my thoughts on reading a hundred books in a year and the trials and tribulations of that and the pros and the cons the ups and the downs uh but right now i'm gonna go to bed because i have to work tomorrow and i'll come back when i have some makeup on and an actual outfit instead of this robe it has a bear head on it that's mine which is Timmy's. <laughs> so, good night. A hundred books in a year. I read a hundred books in a year. And with a little time to spare, it too, because we still have a lot of December left. Mm. <laughs> I never set out to read a hundred books at the beginning of the year, but it was like February or March, and I realized that I was on a roll, so I figured I'd just... I would just do it and then I could check that, you know, little accomplishment off of the, you know, the accomplishment list and then I would never have to do it again. And my thought is that I will never want to do this again. Um, so I have a few things that I want to talk about to like wrap up this like, how did I feel about a hundred books? Uh, but first of all, I thought I would say a few things about the book that was my hundredth because I did mean to vlog the reading experience. But, you know, life happened. Uh, you, you know, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. And uh, I feel like as soon as I decide to do something like a vlog, I, it, you know, I can't plan things. I just have to do them without a plan or else they don't get done. It's some kind of universal karma thing. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I read the seven and a half deaths, seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. And this is... I don't really want to call it a mystery or a thriller because it doesn't really work like most mysteries because a lot of mysteries like leave you little breadcrumbs and clues so you can sort of like solve it along with the book. 
as a reader as you go, but this is not like that. This is just like kind of a, you're on a ride. You just, you know, you open the book and you're just, you're on a ride for 450 pages and there you go. It reminded me a lot of Clue, but you know, not like a comedy. It's like Clue, but not like a comedy um, because there's this guy in this house with a bunch of people and there, you know, will be a murder and you know, he has to figure it out. And I really don't want to say much else other than that because this is one of those books that really benefits from you going in without knowing much about it. Like, I wouldn't even really read the synopsis. Like, if you just want, like, a wild ride, kind of a mystery thing, then just pick it up and don't read the synopsis. Just start reading it and see how you like it. <laughs> I wish that I had gone in without knowing anything about it, because I did know a little bit. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I don't like to read a synopsis too close to reading the book because I don't like to know anything. I just sort of like to go in blind because uh, I don't think the author, you know, was thinking about a synopsis while they were writing the book. So I just like to go into it fresh. Uh, and then I was watching another booktuber, I won't say who it was, and they, they had read this and they were recapping it, or they were reviewing it, and they said that it was a spoiler-free review. And then they said something that seemed a lot like a spoiler. So I was about halfway through the book and I was like, well, I haven't gotten to that yet. And they said it happened in the beginning. So now I'm thinking that they lied to me and they said that they were going to do a spoiler free review and now they're giving spoilers. But they ended up, I read the whole thing and they ended up being wrong about it. Like whatever that they had said never happens in this book. So I'm just like, can I trust any of their reviews now? But anyway, anyway, I had that in mind that kind of like irked me throughout the reading process, but not a big deal. So I ended up getting giving this four out of five stars. I really liked it. I probably would have given it five stars, but there is a really bad characterization of one of the characters in this book. And I would say it's like really like, it's just fat shaming. It is fat shaming a heavier person. And it's just like, why, why did you have to describe that person in that way? And then in the, you know, the um, the author's notes on the back, uh, the author says that they ended up, you know, that character was one of their favorite characters and they're really intelligent and everything. And it's like, then why did you describe them in such a way that felt so like shameful? So that really put a bad taste in my mouth. But, you know, and that's really unfortunate because the book overall was like plotted, like, like, it's just crazy. It's a, it's a ride. I felt like it was an experience. So anyway, I'll be watching this author. I think he's like a travel journalist. Um, this guy here. Hello. Uh, he's a travel journalist and I think this is his first novel. So I will be looking out for him in the future and maybe he'll, he'll learn. <laughs> maybe some other people will review and he'll be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't fat shame people. And then we will all learn from this experience. So that was my 100th book and it was the pick for my book club at work and we're going to discuss it in um not this week the next week and i am very excited to hear what everybody has to think about this what everyone has to say about this i'm oh i'm so excited so yeah so there was the hundredth book i did it yay me uh so how did i feel about reading 100 books in a year i feel accomplished but I will never attempt it again because I ended up some somewhere around in the summer was when I felt a little bit of fatigue. And it's not like I was forcing myself to read per se because I'm always reading something. I'm never not reading something. Uh, so it wasn't that, but it was just like I would neglect some other things that I read in favor of books that I could count for the goal. So I read comic books. I... I get them in single issue. I read some comic series in single issues and I have a backlog of a lot of single issue comics because I don't count single issues towards my Goodreads reading goal. So I wouldn't read my comics and I let myself get really far behind because I'm like, they don't count for the goal so I can't spend time reading them. So I was just like, you know, uh, an idiotic first world problem that I put myself in for the sake of reading a hundred books. Um, but yeah, I still feel very accomplished. And, uh, now I have some, uh, stats to show you. So I 
was thinking about maybe doing a stat video for the year because I have a spreadsheet and I put everything in a spreadsheet and I felt very organized and I figured out how to tally the columns and everything. Uh, but I'm not going to do stats for the year because I'm still going to read a couple of books and then that will put me over a hundred and then the math will be harder. And, um, I just, I just don't want to deal with that. Uh, so we have my 100 book stats here. So I have the spreadsheet. I'll put like a little shot of it here and maybe I'll link it below. So I took it off of, uh, reading riot book, riot, the book, riot book, riot website that was hard to say has uh, articles where they link to people's personal reading spreadsheets so i took one of those and i added a few columns of things that i wanted to track and uh, i wrote them all all down here so i can go over them with you right now so first of all we have my star rating so i have found that either i am very good at picking up books that i know that i will like or i am very generous with my stars and I think it might be a little bit of both because at five stars, I have 31% of the books that I read were at five stars. Then I have one book that was 4.5 stars. So that's 1% at 4.5. And then I have 48% four star rating. So like most books, if I liked them, but they didn't blow me away and like they didn't make me angry, I put them at four stars. So like most of the books that I read are four stars. Then I have 1% for 3.5. Uh, and then I have 15% of three star ratings and then I have two per or I have 4% for two star ratings. Yeah. Two star rating books, 4% of what I read and I have no one star rating for this year. And I'm not going to feel bad about being generous with my stars because I have a video talking about that and you know, we already went over that. Uh, so my male to female author breakdown is 73% female authors, 24% male authors, and then 3% where it was a collaboration and had both male and female authors. So that, I read mostly female identifying authors. So there we go. I like that. <laughs> and then um, authors of color, I have 30% of the books that I read were POC authors. And then I have 24% LGBTQ plus authors. So combined, that's 54. <laughs> See, I had to hesitate just adding those two numbers together. So that's how I math. 54% um, were ma marginalized authors. And some of those are overlap because some books were like an LGBTQ plus and POC author. They identified with both of those categories, um, but I can't, I, I can't figure out the math of the breakdown of like how many books out of, you know, whatever. So we're just going to go with 54% of my reading was from a marginalized author group. And that's, you know, it was cool. It's pretty good. Uh, I can always uh, improve that. I can improve that a lot. I did read um, Black Authors for Black History Month and I did try to read LGBTQ plus authors for Pride Month. So those put those numbers up a little bit, but not too much. Like over the whole course of the year, I still read quite a bit from marginalized authors without seeking them out, just like picking up things that I wanted to read. So, so there you go. Uh, and then for the format, I have 64% of the books were physical, 35% were audiobooks, and 1% was an ebook, which I think it was actually an, like an e-short story. So I, I don't like ebooks. I cannot connect with them at all. Uh, so then the how many pages I read, 20,000. 378 pages. And then for audiobooks was 308.75 hours. That's, that's a lot. Um, and you know, people in real life have told me like, Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, count graphic novels or audiobooks towards your, your, your reading goal. And I'm like, you know what? Don't, don't police my reading. <laughs> like you go and read a hundred tomes of full physical books and then come back and then we can have a discussion. Okay. 
uh, yeah. Anyway, so moving on. Uh, the age range. So I have adult, YA, middle grade, and children's books. So 52% of my reading was adult. 38% was YA. 8% was middle grade. And 2% were children's books. And also, I don't uh, mind counting children's books because, like, you know, big deal. I read two of them and I'm going to read some more to get me over my 100 goal. And I'm justifying myself. And I don't need to because... I am the booktator of this channel and I decide what goes. So there we go. Uh, okay, and then I have genre. So this is a pretty like, and I don't even really like this breakdown because some fit into two genres and like I really didn't want to think too hard about which one I should shelve it with. I'm not a library. I don't have a Dewey Decimal System. I'm not a bookstore. It just, you know, whatever. So... We're just gonna go really quick through the breakdown here. Plays were two, two plays, uh, three short stories, or three short story collections, 47 in just general fiction, um, five in science fiction, eight graphic novels, four thrillers, four mysteries, and I think mysteries and thrillers are, are different things, um, six romance books, eight nonfiction books, eight manga, and I think manga is different from graphic novels, uh, and two picture books, which again is different from graphic novels and manga, and one poetry book. So I could probably read more poetry next, next year or, you know, whatever. Uh, so then the longest book was 849 pages, and that was Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and one of my favorites that I read this year. Thank you to Kate Hickey for suggesting that book always. Um, it's just always, like, in the background of her video, so I'm like, yeah, I should probably I keep seeing it. Let's read it. So it was great. Read that book. And then the longest audiobook that I read was 25 and a half hours, and that was Deary by Bob Spitz. And that was about Julia Child. And I love Julia Child, but I didn't really like the guy's writing style. So, uh, And then the shortest book was a tie of 40 pages between uh, Marlon Bundo, the, uh, what is it, A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, the, uh, the parody one. Yes, cat. Can you see cat? Whoa! That probably looked not great because they like kind of grabbed her and she jumped at the same time. So anyway, she's fine. Uh, so yeah, 40 pages for Marlon Bundo and also it was a tie with uh, Dragon's Love Tacos. So I guess 40 pages is a common page range for children's books. Uh, and then the shortest audiobook was The Importance of Being Earnest play. And there you go all my stats. Um, I was thinking, I was trying to think if there were any other stats that uh, I wanted to note, um, but I don't really think that there are. I know some people track like what country um, the authors are from or if they're um, translated, and I don't think that I have enough to warrant like putting that in another category. I think I've read maybe like two translated works and then I think my breakdown would mostly be North America and, like, the UK. So, I mean, that tells me that I could read more diversely in that sense, um, but there just wasn't enough to make an interesting stat. So, there we have it. I, I feel like this is a little anticlimactic. I should have, like, thrown a party or something to celebrate or got some noisemakers or something. What do you think, Kitty? What should we do to celebrate a hundred books? What? Eat a cookie? Okay, we'll go do that. We'll go eat a cookie. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and thank you for being on this journey with me, um, especially if you have been subscribed to my channel for a while, because I definitely would not have read as many books if not for BookTube constantly putting new and exciting books in my face that I want to get to. So that definitely had spurred me along to read more books in the first place anyway. Uh, so thank you so much for watching this video. And until my next one, happy reading, nerds.